everybody loves to consider themselves to be a unique snowflake. Have you ever had that experience where you meet a new group of people and they're like, oh my God, you're awesome. You're so much like our friend Darren. Don't you reckon he's the new Darren? And inside you're like, well, I feel good that I've ingratiated myself with this new group of people. However, I do feel a little perturbed that they're comparing me to this Darren. Who is Darren? How could he possibly be better than me? Aren't I the most original, unique person these people have ever met? And then you meet Darren and you're like, yeah, you are kind of like me. We are kind of similar. This is frustrating. How do I differentiate myself? So we've all had that experience. At least if you're a complete narcissist, you know that feeling. And speaking of narcissists, let's bring the, uh, let's welcome the musical artists to the stage or artists in general. I, I remember hearing this story ages ago that, you know, you hear about bands that have beef with each other. And there are some artists who will have PR fueled, very public beefs. And then there's bands who are just like, yeah, don't like you. <laughs> and uh, I believe there was some type of beef between Muse and Radiohead because Radiohead broke a couple years before Muse. And then Muse came along and I believe Tom York was angry at the geezer from Muse because he was just like, yeah, he's doing the operatic singing thing. That's kind of my thing. And then you analyze it a bit further. You can kind of see how um muse took a little bit of the template uh the rock template on the early radiohead for example the bends but then they kind of kidified it muse is kind of like uh power rangey power rangers kid action movie style early radiohead so you could tell if you were radiohead and you had aspirations to be like yeah we're art rock and uh, we're all earn it if. <laughs> and then Muse comes along. We will not be controlled. Uh, yeah, that type of shit. You could kind of uh, understand why Tom York and his, um, and his merry band of left-handed freaks would feel a little miffed. But I've got a solution. And this should tick a lot of boxes. Remember like 10 years ago, it became really popular for bands to be like, hey, remember we've got that one popular album from 15 or 20 years ago? Why didn't you come and watch us do it? And yeah, we have been doing those popular songs repeatedly whilst touring for the last 15 years, but this time we're going to do it in order. And then any of our other classic hits, um, we're going to just do them at the very end in like a five song medley. So don't worry, you'll hear all the classic hits just in a slightly different order. And we can have a nostalgia fap session on this classic album, sell a few more t-shirts, Bob's your uncle, shows this Saturday, $70.50 on Ticketmaster. So that was really popular for a while, but that's kind of run out of steam, I, I feel now, kind of. Um, so here's another option. You get two bands that are kind of similar and they play each other's tunes. You get Muse and Radiohead and they get to kind of like put their own stamp on each other's songs. And in some instances, it would be amazing. It would be like, I don't know, imagine like Neil Young and Roger Waters went out. Let's assume they're friends. They, they do like very... It'd be interesting to see and they'd maybe kind of like uh, put a different spin on a song that you hadn't seen before. Whereas if you had bands that hated each other, like Radiohead and Muse, that it'd be like a battle of the bands type of thing. And it would get the punters out because I feel like that's something, I don't know, I'd, in, in some, it's so it's so interesting music how with your own musical tastes, you can be a complete nuffy and just love seeing the same songs over and over. But to someone else, that's depressing. Like if someone says, uh, oh, I saw Bruce Springsteen 
And uh, I've heard him play Atlantic City six times down the years. But the t- the time I saw him uh, at the Madison Square Garden in 2007, that version of Atlantic City, that was so much better because of because Clarence really went to fucking town with a sax solo. I don't know, like they give some random reason why that particular version was so much better. And you're like, really, was it that much fucking different? The various times that he did the exact same song, um, probably lowering the pitch with each uh, as he gets on in years and can't hit the high notes. You know, you just kind of look at it from afar. But if it's you, it's kind of like going home for Christmas each year and hearing the same dumb jokes from your family. The jokes suck. You've heard them before, but it's your family. And you you kind of crave the nostalgia and repetition of what you've had before. So that's, I acknowledge that, but every now and again, you got to change things up. People deal with side projects that rarely works. Super groups that rarely works. I think this is an option because you could have bands that really get along, love one another, um, and want to tour together and kind of, uh, put, put stamps on each other's songs and then have a big fucking, um, you know, jamboree at the end where everyone and of course Dave Grohl would come out uh, as the surprise guest and all of these kind of uh, rocks every man uh, dropping in with that big goofy smile on his face so Dave Grohl you you guaranteed get a Grohl session on these shows as well it would be great for bands to get along and then if if there was beef with the bands they could settle it once and for all putting their own spin on each other's tunes you heard it here first. This is going to happen at some point in the future. I want my credit because I'm unique and I'm special. <laughs> All right. Bye.